This is the joint I'm going to be showing you in this week's video, and this is a intersecting joint for mutton bars, vertical and horizontal mutton bars. Some people call them glazing, glazing bars that you see commonly in traditional windows. In my case, it's a set of French doors. Um, so you can see there's this is my test piece, so I had quite a lot to dial in to get this right, but it's a, two separate lap joints, one on the top side, one on the bottom side, followed by 45 degree miters on all of the edges in order for all these to fit together, and they basically create separated sections for all the glass panes. Um, this is what the doors look like in, the, in their current state. Is this the hardest joint in woodworking? No, unfortunately, you kind of have to play into the YouTube um, clickbait rules to get some views on some of these videos, but it's definitely one of the hardest joints I've ever done. Um, and that's mainly because if you're watching this series on doors, this is where I left it off last week with the horizontal muttons. And I'm going to be joining them with the verticals this week. And at this point, you've already put many hours into the process and messing up these bars would basically put you back at scratch. You would have to remake all of them. So to start this video, like I said, I'm going to be showing you how I make the vertical bars. They're a little bit different than the horizontal bars because they don't have to be uh, mortised into the frame. Because the horizontals are mortised into the frame, that will hold the vertical steady. So it is a little bit of an easier process, but I have to change my setup because that means I'm just making a rabbit on the end. So I'm going to move the setup I had from last week up. You can see I'm just changing the fence. It gives you a good idea of why I made these um, sacrificial plates on this router table fence. So I could bury the blades safely in the fence, but also replace them when they get too marred up. And then I could just send a scrap piece through just to get the depth accurate because like I said, I just need that rabbit on the bottom side. The top side is a different dimension where that um, piece of material will meet the different profile on the top side of the doors. So once I had one edge done, I could just lay the doors on top of it, measure the final vertical, and then I could go through and cut both of the sides. You can see on this one, all I'm doing is removing a little bit of a kerf cut. Now that's because if I didn't do that, the bottom side of my stock would hit the um, the blade that, that the shaft of the blade that goes into the router. Removing that kerf makes it clear it. And then um, you can see I have those two in place. If you're interested in a more detailed video of making these, last week's video was showing you how I made the horizontals, and it was a step-by-step -step guide to the router bits and the setup for making these. That's why this week I'm going through this pretty quickly. Once I had both of them in place, I could profile them and cut the edges off just like I did the horizontal uh, muttons. And like I said, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because it is uh, material I went over last week. I just have my profiling bit set up in the router table and then I could cut off the rest of this material. This thin frame in the back will be where the glass goes, but then eventually there will be profiled molding that holds all the glass in, this, in place. So the fact that this stock on the bottom side there is a quarter of an inch will not look like that once everything is said and done. So then this is the part that gets a little difficult. It's joining this vertical to these horizontals. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, cut the horizontals because they're a little bit smaller. Um, and I only have to do one joint, which is going to be in the middle. Now, I originally made uh, panels like this a couple years ago, so I had this test piece laying around, which is a very sloppy joint. I'm changing the way I did these from when I first did this years and years ago. And then I have these two test pieces, which you saw I cut into quite a bit in order to dial everything in. The main problem is because these pieces aren't symmetrical, you can't cut all the joints with one setup. So I had to keep changing it. But to start, I'm going to be putting a quarter inch lap on the top side of some of my pieces on the bottom sides of others. And I just set up the rate alarm saw with a quarter inch dado stack and I got it so it was cutting perfectly halfway through the material. 
Now I went through multiple jigs for this. I'm basically showing you the one that I went with. This was probably about three or four hours into the process and it's just a very simple sled that I'm temporarily attaching to some slides in the table saw. Make sure everything is square and then I'm basically going to go from there. So this is going to be what I'm using to cut all those miters. They have to, The blade has to be set at a perfect height so it doesn't go too high into the material and it has to be set so that the end of that blade is right at the tip of the material so that when you go to cut the other material it matches up perfectly. If you remove too little material obviously it won't fit together at all. If you remove too much material obviously you'll have gaps in the joint. So basically what I did on this test piece is I just marked on the sled where that lap joint needs to set in order for this to line up perfectly with the cut and the blade. Now some of these, and like I said, part of the problem is you're cutting these a different orientation when you're doing the two separate sets of muttons. One will have the top side um, lap, one will have the bottom side lap, and you have to flip them around. But I finally got a pretty decent test cut. This is the one I showed in the beginning of the video. There wasn't a lot of gaps in it. I could fine tune it a little bit, but most importantly, everything was flat and square, and it also lined up on the bottom. So for all of my horizontals, I decided to cut the laps on the top, and those were gonna be the ones I started with. As you can see, you can't see in the video, but I have a stop on the um, right-hand side of the blade, and I could cut all of those laps perfectly in the center. For my jig, I decided to also cut a lap um, with that dado stack right down where the orientation was set and then I was going to put an indexing pin similar to a finger jointing jig so that all of those pieces could sit on top of that indexing pin which would align them perfectly with the saw blade and I could get accurate cuts because as you'll see you're cutting four of these so you have to flip it um, flip it over and you could cut two diagonal sides and then you're also going to have to flip it backwards in order, in order to finish the cuts. So I could set this on top of those. You could see the lap joint is what's going to cradle that indexing pin and then I could just send these pieces through. You can see I can only cut one side of the diagonals and then I have to flip it to the back side of the jig and finish the cut. That's why this jig looks so weird. It's a very thin piece of wood because you really just need the whole thing to set on top of the wood, but also have enough of it to hold in place to rock back and forth. If your piece is rocking, you'll get an uneven miter. And that is what that joint looks like. These ones turned out uh, pretty perfect. You can see there's a little bit of extra material at the edge, um, which is fine because if you go too deep, you'll you'll start cutting into into where your your uh, quarter inch piece of material is. I just remove that with some sandpaper. Once that one turned out fine, the horizontals were pretty much a rinse and repeat process. All the laps are in the same spot. The indexing pin was working really well, and I could just go through and cut all of the joints. The problem came along with doing longer pieces because you'll see I had to change the orientation of the jig in order to make it work. So that is um, the horizontals in place. I lined up my verticals. You can see I have it set so that the, the moldings match where they are. I have them in place and that is basically so I could go through and mark where I need to put the lap joints on all these pieces. Now the nice thing about these doors are it, they took a while to do. There's a lot of advanced joinery in them, but up until this point they are identical. So now I can cut my verticals the same. So once again I have a stop. I made the marks from where the vertical muttons align with the horizontals. And then on this one, this is the main difference. These are getting the bottom side laps and the bottom side lapped pieces are a little bit different for cutting. As you'll see, um, my setup has to change a little bit. I have to use two indexing pins to align everything. I got a little bit of error in some of the pieces and you'll see how um, I deal with that. Because at this point, unless something was severely messed up, 
um, going back and remaking all this stuff will be very expensive and extremely time consuming. So I'm just going through and making all those initial laps on there. There's going to be um, up and down the set. I'd already, since the horizontals are mortised into place, they're already set. My spacing's already set. So as you can see, with the top side lap, it's easy. It can go through the piece. But the problem is with the bottom side lap, there's too much play in the piece. So I have to take my index and pin out and change it. So that is basically where I'm going to start. And the reason the index and pin isn't working is because the top side profile of that piece is hitting it. So all I did was I, I the move the the positioning of it isn't going to change. It's just the style of it changes. And you could see I just put a skinnier vertical one on there so that I can cut these pieces um, without it butting up against that that piece. So it's easy now. I have those those laps for the radial arm saw. They're kind of cushioned over that that vertical indexing pin, and I can go through and cut all of these on this jig without using a fence or or anything like that. But same process as the first ones. I can only cut two of the joints that I need with this setup. Now in the first ones, obviously you saw I was able to flip it to the back side and cut the rest, but because of the orientation of this pin, I can't flip these backwards. Now this worked for me. Um, I have no plans to make doors like this further in the future. I just don't have, I can make them. My shop really isn't set up for them, so it's a more time consuming process. But if anyone has, um, easier ways to make these. I'm interested in hearing how other people make make this joint. So then as you can see, in order to flip this over to the back side of that fence and cut the other two joints, I had to make an L-shaped indexing pin. Otherwise, that profile would hit the pin and then I could go through and cut those. Now because these ones needed three different setups, I believe that's where I got minor uh, bits of error in the joints and like I said you'll see how I address that um, it, later in the video. It wasn't enough to warrant remaking these. Obviously it's a little bit frustrating to spend all this time on something and there to be some hairline gaps but there are ways to, to fix uh, mistakes if they're not extremely severe. So basically same thing though I'm just sending all of my pieces through cutting those other two joints and obviously in this one you do have a little a little bit of material left over so I could just pop those out with a chisel and then clean those um, intersecting joints up so there's a little bit of material there I'm basically just bringing it down to that quarter inch flange so that everything is on the same plane so this was pretty easy work. I actually sharpened my chisels for this job. So um, the, the, the work was pretty fast. And this is the first one. Everything was put together and this one lined up pretty perfectly. On one of the other ones, I had a couple spots where I had hairline cracks. We're talking about maybe a 30 seconds of an inch. Could probably be avoided filling, but I wanted them to be tight fits. So I had a bunch of thin pieces of material left over from milling up all this material. I took little bits of scrap, I epoxied them in the corners, and then you could see I just profiled them to the original profile of the material, and once in place you can barely tell that there is essentially a little shim there, because originally there was a hairline gap, and then once I popped all of these in place, and now that they have finish on them, you can barely tell that they are there. So like I said, for what I did, it wasn't perfect, but the mistakes were small enough that I was able to add those little pieces of material and everything fit into place. And now you can see how my mortise and tenons will fit into the outer edge of my, my uh, frame panel doors. So like I said, is this the hardest joint to make? Probably not. In my shop, it's one of the hardest joints I've made, but I think the hardest joint is probably some, one of these more intricate Japanese joints that you see in books and, and sometimes on YouTube. But for DIYers, there's definitely a learning curve in something like this, but this is the uh, traditional way to join all this stuff together. And then once all these doors are in place, the, this inner stock seems kind of thin at first, but they're extremely sturdy.
So you can see I have the horizontals will we'll align with those mortise and tenons, and then the profile on the, the long sides fit into the profile of the doors, and then I could put everything together. Um, in the next few videos, I'll show gluing all this stuff up, I'll show cleaning up the corners of these doors, and then eventually um, glass, and then also adding stuff like weather stripping and all of that. This is a long build. Um, as far as woodworking goes, these are one of the harder things I've ever made definitely one of the more time consuming but i'm pretty happy with the the progress so far and then once again just making sure they fit in my um my jams